Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, haere mai, haere mai, haere mai kia koutou katoa. It's our honour and privilege again from Ngāti Whātua Rākei to come and acknowledge our worship to me, tēnā koe, uh, te kora matua, me ngā kaunihera, kia koutou katoa, we acknowledge you all who have come to celebrate this peace movement. Greetings to everyone here, and it's great to see people out in this number to celebrate the 30th anniversary of our country becoming the first country in the world to declare itself nuclear free. Yeah. There are far too many people to acknowledge in this crowd. Some of you I've worked with for the last 30 years in the cause of making our country nuclear free and working for a world free of weapons of mass destruction. The importance of 30 years ago was that we drew a line in the sand we said that our small nation would not be told by any other nation the values that we should hold and the actions that we should take. We declared ourselves nuclear free and we declared ourselves as a fiercely independent nation capable of making its own decisions. But I remember the intense pride that I felt as a New Zealander that our Prime Minister put us on the world stage as at the forefront of countries that said no more to the madness of spending billions of dollars on weapons of mass destruction. And New Zealand led the way and we can be proud of what happened at that time. But let us think for a moment of why we are gathered here. We are gathered here not simply to commemorate that event, but to recommit ourselves to continue in the fight for a world that is free of nuclear weapons. War is not just uh, something you see on the TV screens that looks like a video game. A war is a real and present threat for the whole 
human race. I think our task is to remind the young people how dangerous for the human race nuclear weapons are and how hard we must work to abolish them. As Christ said, blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of God. And I want to thank everybody that was involved in the achievements of the peace movement in New Zealand and the achievement of the nuclear free New Zealand. That is just a step along the way to the world peace and harmony we must leave for our children and our descendants. which was the last time that we made a peace sign on these grounds. But it was also very impressive. I think it was one of the most crucial years in our work to achieve a nuclear-free New Zealand and our work ultimately to try to achieve a nuclear-free and independent Pacific. <laughs> the people in the Pacific had been experiencing French nuclear testing and it was still ongoing and the people in the Pacific had been experiencing US nuclear tests and virtually destroyed islands and poisoned <laughs> the uh, territory of so many people in the Marshall Islands and in Micronesia. When the US Texas steamed into our harbour, a nuclear-powered and nuclear-armed warship, the protests against the Texas were ginormous. There were over 120 craft on the water as the Texas came in, 20,000 people marched up Queen Street. And it was the next day, Hiroshima Day, that we gathered on the lawns to make our peace sign. And again, there were some two or 3,000 people joining together to make that peace sign. They were things that sprang up from neighborhood peace groups. They were things that sprang up out of people's hearts and people's determination to do what they could to make sure that New Zealand became nuclear free. Well, when we had all our small boats out on the harbour for the Peace Squadron between 1975 and 1984, we had no idea uh, what we were getting into and how effective it would be. Uh, the infant television cameras were absolutely fascinated by what we were doing so they were always on the spot uh, year by year as Muldoon brought in these death ships uh, into the harbours and we knew they were death ships they weren't a nuclear umbrella at all the umbrella itself was made up of bombs so there was no protection from these things but for Muldoon of course they were the only thing that would save us and look after our security so we had the television cameras and we had the the newspaper banner headlines, and the whole thing uh, just kept it in front of the public and helped them decide whether we were going to be, continue to be an independent uh, nuclear-free nation or not. We were sort of planting a small seed. One, two, uh, uh. <laughs> my colleague Richard Northey who was in the great synchronicity of life Richard who was a campaigner he was chair of campaign for nuclear disarmament from 1970 to 1983 and then he was in Parliament when Labour passed the nuclear free legislation but the White Matar local board is delighted to have funded the installation of the plaque with the support of the chairman of the domain committee, Councillor Mike Lee. To the plaque, to the tree, we acknowledge it's the Rangatira Tanga uh, that celebrates our cause today for peace movement. We acknowledge the plaque that is down here today and as we unveil it to God. <laughs>
sitting as a humble diplomat in a negotiating room in Canberra with the highly reputed New Zealand ambassador, Chris Beebe, and another colleague, Nigel Fife. And the three of us were the New Zealand delegation negotiating the South Pacific Regional Nuclear Free Zone Treaty of Rarotonga. That nuclear free zone in New Zealand and others elsewhere around the world are the precursors. They require legitimate commemoration, but they must inspire us to continue the work. So let us resolve that this zone is the precursor to a total nuclear weapon ban. A round of applause for you from the bottom of my heart. As someone of the generation born in the 80s, I thank you. You carved a path for our generation to feel proud of what New Zealand could be, of our ability to stand up on the world stage, to be our own independent nation, to denounce what is a powerful, destructive, immoral weapon that could lead to our entire annihilation as a globe. I thank you for having that moral compass for New Zealand. But I absolutely agree. We have a moral high ground that would be wasted unless we continue to pursue a nuclear-free world. We will come this far, we can stand as one. And we will rise together, we will rise together and power one another. 30 years is something to commemorate. But one of the most important things is to take that struggle forward. And for other nations to know that New Zealand is truly united on this issue. And we must embrace the legislation, incorporate it as part of our policy, so that they know they have a united New Zealand voice on this issue. And since then, all political parties in Parliament, right across the entire spectrum, and I think all New Zealanders, have embraced the concept of a nuclear free world. And that is really a challenge to future generations as well. And this very month in New York, 130 nations are negotiating a nuclear weapons prohibition treaty. And New Zealand is leading that. We are a co-chair and a co-sponsor. We have to persuade friends and partners, Canada, Australia, Netherlands, Norway, a whole bunch of other countries to come on board with this. August 6, 1945, Hiroshima. The little boy bomb falls silently from the sky. On impact, 50,000 citizens are killed. Instantly. A little girl named Tomiko Matsumoto watched her whole family die. There are still 15,000 nuclear weapons in today's world. Surely we owe it to Tomiko and the thousands of other bomb survivors to rid our world of these terrible weapons. I truly believe that a global treaty banning nuclear weapons is possible. The courage of politicians is inspired by the courage of the people. And the nuclear free movement uh, began many, many years ago. And it was a people's movement. The first peace flotillas were in 72 and 73, including the one uh, to Mora Atoll which became the founding of Greenpeace here in New Zealand in 72 and also the one in 73 when Norman Kirk farewelled the frigate Otago from Auckland Harbour and he said to the crew then yours is an honourable mission with the power to bring alive the conscience of the world. Let me take you on an unexpected journey. It's 3.23 in the morning. And I cannot sleep 
because my great great grandchildren ask me in dreams what did you do when the planet was unraveling what did you do when the season started failing the birds the mammals started dying did you fill the streets with protest when democracy was stolen what did you do once you knew We'll open up our borders and surrender. 